Hi guys, my name is Arpita. I teach courses in clinical research. I also provide placements to the students. Uh, I also include the JCP training and JCP audit. I work with many clinical research institutes, pharmacy colleges, medical colleges as a faculty placement person, visiting lecturer, I, uh, respectively, and I'm also working as a motivational speaker currently. Uh, this is uh, my fourth video, uh, fifth video rather. I have discussed four infrastructure pillar of clinical research in video three. If you haven't checked it yet, I will mention the link in the description box below uh, for your further reference. Uh, if you want to continue getting details about clinical research, please feel free to subscribe to my channel, uh, hit the like button and uh, turn on notification button. Well, um, today I am going to discuss the important pillar of clinical research industry that is ethics committee. So let's understand these way. Uh, we require the subject. As you know that we require the subject to conduct clinical research. Subject that means a patient or healthy human volunteers we require to conduct clinical research on that. We require principal investigator that means a doctor to administer drug and uh, rescue subject while conducting clinical trials on that. Uh, we also require infrastructures uh, like clinical research organization that means a CRO. I explained that in my video number two and three both. You can check it out. We need service providers like a site management organization that means SMO. We need money to invest uh, for years in clinical research like 10 to 12 years. We need two authorities uh, to approve clinical trials that is one is RA that means regulatory authority that means uh, the um, the law of uh, law and the, the ministry of uh, clinical research that you can say in, in a layman's language and the second one is ethics committee today we are going to discuss about the ethics committee RA will going to discuss in our next lecture so today we are going to discuss about ethics committee and let's begin with that an ethics committee understand my words very perfectly an ethics committee is an individual or institutional structure constituted with scientific non-scientific technical and non-technical members. I'm repeating that things one more time. Uh, ethics committee is an individual or institutional structure constituted with scientific, non-scientific, technical and non-technical members. It is like um, a democracy for the people, by the people, of the people, kind of. We know that things, I mean, <clears throat> all ethics committees registered under regulatory authority of that particular country. All ethics committee. Uh, there are a lot of ethics committee uh, in India, uh, specifically like I mean the all medical hospitals and uh, uh, pharmaceuticals. I mean CROs are having their uh, ethics committee. Ethics committees are inspected by regulatory authority as and when required. Uh, but please understand, ethics committee is not a part of government. Uh, ethics committee is always inspected by regulatory authority at least once in a year. That you need to understand. It is only uh, registered under government um, within the limitations of laws and guidelines. That's true. Trial can be registered and approved with RA. Mark my words. Trials can be registered and approved with RA. All trials in this uh, world. It has to be registered and approved with that RA of that particular country. For example, in India, it is an ECGI. If it is a, a USA, it is a FDA. Um, trials, again I am repeating these things, trials can be registered and approved with RA only if EC has approved it before at least at one site. I am repeating that thing one more time. The regulatory authority will approve the trial but it has to be approved before the ethics committee uh, that at least, at least at one site, right? So now uh, let's understand these way. In a simple language, it is like a panchayat system. I think everybody is very much aware about the what is panchayat system, right? So it is like a panchayat system where five different experts of different age groups who represent different communities. They come together and brainstorm or take a decisions for the betterment of that particular village or particular community. They see issues from their uh, different perspectives, uh, obviously because of they are from different age group and uh, they are representing different communities and virtual, moral, belief, everything is very different. So that's why they can take the decision according to that and try to come up with an adjoining decisions. Same here in ethics committee, the ethics committee is almost the same concept. 
and this committee protects the right safety and well being of transgender subject underline my words and mark my words and repeating one more time at this committee protects the right safety well being of the trans subject you know about the rights and safety but well being that means um, the stability and the mental satisfactions of that particular person that is the well being of a human uh the approve and reject trials as per their values belief morals ethics uh, festivals disease conditions post trials benefits risk laws and guidelines of their particular localities uh, or hospitals right um it is also called a demographic organization that takes decisions see again understand this thing it is also called as demographic organization like particular locality uh, organization that takes decision keeping in mind their patients population so that trial process can be cannot disturb societal balance societal harmony or the things matlab uh, it is also called as i am repeating these things one more time it is also called as demographic organization that takes decisions keeping in mind their patients population so that the trial process cannot be disturb societal harmony ethics committee review research proposal involving uh, human participants and their data to ensure that they are conducted within the limitation of national and international law yeah we are also keeping a uh, mind in international law they also monitor studies before uh, before during and after clinical trials that is also true that they are actually uh, monitoring and uh, supervising the study before during and after clinical trials has to be as per the laws and guidelines has to be followed very thoroughly right their main responsibility uh, is to protect the subject uh, involved in the trial and also consider the possible risk to the community and the environment that's true at this committee have the authority to approve reject and modify approve reject modify and stop the studies uh, that do not confirm to the uh, do not confirm to the acceptance uh, accepted standards so i mean that means a limitation that has to be in the limitations of laws and guidelines which is being uh, uh, designed by regulatory authority of india and that means by uh, dcgi now having understood the basic functions of ethics committee we need to understand how does it work now there are two uh, there are basically two the main types of ec that we know that uh, one is irb the other one is known as iec the so one is institutional review board irb and independent ethics committee these are the two organizations okay fine when an institution or organization uses its own ethics committee it is called an institutional review board right for example a hospital who is like any of the hospitals like government or private hospitals who are actually into medical uh, having a medical students or doing observational studies definitely having their own I am institutional review board. They have their own ethics committee. They has to be registered, right? Uh, this is set up by head of institutions, yeah, dean of that uh, particular hospital, as per their qualifications and experiences. Uh, I'm repeating that statement again. I mean, uh, they recruit or um, this has been set up by the head of institutions as per their qualification and experiences. Similarly, when an institute or organization where a clinical trial is to take place does not have its own ethics committee, understand this thing. If an organization does not having their own ethics committee, it they can use ethics committee of some other organization or so which is approachable. Uh, maybe a nearby in the, uh, the same city or um, uh, the nearest locality that can be uh, used as an IRB. This now this is known as an independent ethics committee. It functions as an independent ethics committee, right? So uh, now, if we look into how does it work, we need to understand that ethics committee has a group of members that excels in their field, like uh, pharmacologist, clinician, uh, social worker, uh, medical scientist, philanthropist, ethicist, legal experts. Uh, any one member uh, has to be a women member. and um, yeah the lay person so this kind of members we require their ethics committee so that they are experts in their own domain and they can have their own opinion uh, on that particular trial whether that trial should be uh, conducted in that particular uh, 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 hospital or uh, medical college or not so that's why important we have minimum these kind of experts Uh, on board in ethics committee so that they have a different perspective and then uh, decisions can be taken 
from the above mentioned qualifications we realize that we have members that can look after new drugs that we intended to discover a uh, member that can take care of health and uh, health of the subject that is a doctor uh, members that understand the legal aspects of that particular uh, trial that is a lawyer and member that member like a lay persons or a woman member that can put uh, who can put forward their opinion regarding what impact would the trial have on the normal person like a person like you and me kind of so the, the lay person can take it uh, their perspective whether it should be taken care or not whether the, that trial should be conducted or not uh, so it depends on the the uh, uh, the, the, the locality their uh, socio economic structures their uh, atmosphere their festival season and everything has to be uh, in uh, taken care uh, who has no idea about the trials i mean see who is uh, the female members basically the female or women members who is uh, have no idea about the trials or being gender specific on women into account the impact of the trial on the social and mental well being in the society Men member can take care of these things too. Uh, if there is a specific trial on gynec or pediatric uh, or a kind of a trial who is women specific, has to be handled from their perspective. We need to understand their perspective too, and uh, uh, this is really important opinion uh, for the ethics committee. Not only this, uh, the ethics committee may have a member of a representative group that, depending on the indications of a trial, for example, uh, if it is a proposed trial for the HIV patients, ethics committee also. Uh, a provision of representing representing hiv patients in the committee so that they can understand because see hiv patient can understand hiv is like in a very stigmatization disease so uh, representations of uh, any any one member from the hiv who has been positive with the hiv has to be presented in ethics committee so that they can uh, put forward their problems their social stigma their stress everything in front of the ethics committee and ethics committee take care uh, uh, ethics committee and take the decisions uh, on on their uh, on, uh, i mean on of course on their opinion so uh, let's uh, go further um hiv who has to bear the stigma uh, of the disease in the particular society we know that right similarly if we have a trial procedure that needs ethics committee approval uh, on an urgent basis it can be due to any reason like uh, pandemic uh, covid 19 or uh, we can take like disease due to natural calamity we have this, this has to be taken care so this has to be very fast in that case so we have expedited ethics committee that's they are doing one fast decision making process so we have an expedited ethics committee to speed up the entire trial process entire approval process ethics committee may also inspect the sites without any notice to which has accorded approval to conduct the clinical trials or uh, yeah they need not to uh, give the specific uh, uh, notice to particular site or cros uh, where they are approving uh, the trials but yeah yearly they, they they can go for uh, uh, for cost inspections and even the like, annual inspection is very much mandatory that this committee is a very uh, very big chapter actually it is very big chapter there are um, many types of approvals there are many types of uh, sub ethics committees centralized ethics committee there are a lot of other things in that uh, we will definitely get into the details once uh, during our lectures of diploma in clinical research i'll give you details idea about and that is entire chapter will be studied from the different perspective angles and guidelines national and international guidelines so my intention of today's lecture uh, was to just give a brief idea uh, brief idea of the fact whatever the trials we talk about are performed and taken care of intellectually morally scientifically and ethically right i intend to make you aware that all of the clinical trials been undertaken the center of uh, it involves around only one aspect that the subjects of the or the patient subject or the patient hope this clarifies and give you a detail or brief idea of what the ethics committee is all about now if you like my uh, video press the like button uh, forward it to your friends and subscribe to my channel uh, i am also requesting you to if you if you have any of the query or comment put it down in a comment box and i am seeing lot of people who is been watching my video but they are not subscribing the channel so please subscribe to my channel and if you have any queries put it down in the comment box thank you